Hey YouTube, this is Peter with Stuffed Attic, and today I'm going to take a look at the SVS PB16 Ultra Home Theater Subwoofer. On the top of the PB16 Ultra, you have a LCD segment display. It only comes in this color. You can manually change the controls, like the volume, right on the display itself, so that's convenient. But I usually use the Bluetooth application. Then you have the woofer itself, and then you have the three different ports on the speaker enclosure. And you can seal one port. You can have all ports open, or you can seal all ports. And then you can change the EQ settings in the, uh, the Bluetooth application. So around the back of the subwoofer, you have basically your inputs. You have your line level outputs. So if you're using the subwoofer without a receiver, you have your LFA input. If you are using a receiver, then you have your XLR left and right outputs and your XLR left and right inputs if you're connecting the subwoofer to some pro audio interface, which would be kind of strange in this case. And then you also have a really thick 20 amp, 120 volt cable. It might be 240 volt, depends where you are on the planet. Let's take a quick look at the accessories that come with the subwoofer. First, you got your paperwork and what looks to be the little remote. So I'm gonna tear this open. As you can see, I've never actually opened it before. So the remote is something you can use if you don't wanna use the Bluetooth app. So that's a nice touch for those people that don't wanna have a smartphone out. And then you have, let's see, some advertisement, it looks like. Oh, let me get this plastic off. All right, yep, some advertisement, the owner's manual, and a quick start guide. So the quick start guide is pretty good. Uh, unboxing this thing is quite the task. It comes on a pallet, actually, and the, bar the box barely fits through a normal doorway. The only other thing you get is the subwoofer port plugs. I call them the butt plugs. So there's actually three of them. I'm using one. So here are the two other ones, and that's how they come packaged. All right, let's take a quick look at the Bluetooth application to control the subwoofer. This is the home screen of the app. It'll automatically find the subwoofer itself. You can easily adjust the gain. You can select between various presets. And here are the other menu options that you can get to. Low pass filter, phase, polarity, parametric EQ, room gain, port tuning, presets, system settings, and a couple others. So let's go to the tuning part first. So you can tune the subwoofer in three different modes, normal, extended, and sealed, which changes the frequency response of the subwoofer a bit, depending on which ports you seal with the foam plugs. All right. Then you can go to low pass filter. So if you're not using a receiver, you can change which frequencies you want to pass to the subwoofer itself. Then you have parametric EQ. If you want to EQ the different bands a little bit, depending on what your room is like. Polarity, you can change the polarity of the signal in case you wired your speakers backwards or something like that. You have room game compensation, so if your room amplifies or dips the sound a little bit, you can adjust it. And then lastly is system settings that I'm going to look at. So the most important setting for me is to change that stupid blue LED segment display to off. And you can do that here. And you can also lock the display so people can't change it. You can also turn off the display from the home screen. So I usually do that right away. The problem is every time you open this app up, it turns it back on though. So you have to turn it off before you leave the app. So next up, I'm gonna give you a little demo on how the subwoofer sounds. First, I'm gonna play a short clip from Hacksaw Ridge, and then I'm gonna play a sound bite from Bass I Love You. Keep in mind that how it sounds on the clip is not necessarily representative of how the subwoofer sounds in real life because it depends on my microphone, which isn't that great and then the playback device that you're using to watch this video. Try to listen for any port chuffing noise or cabinet rattle. You'll notice that there isn't any from the PV16 Ultra.
So is the PB16 Ultra worth $2,500? Let me tell you why it's worth $2,500. The build quality is great. The Bluetooth application works great with the subwoofer and the subwoofer puts out a crazy amount of bass all the way down to 13 Hertz, inaudible to people. It'll shake the crap out of my kitchen. It'll shake the crap out of the, my entire house. It'll shake the crap out of the house next door to me. So that's great. SVS also has a great in-home trial program and they have great customer support. Now let me tell you why it might not be worth $2,500. When you have space and the tolerance to have two subwoofers, for example, even if they're smaller, cheaper ones, it may be worth it to get that instead. Because when you have two subwoofers, you can equalize the frequency response for the bass within the room more easily. For example, in my house, I noticed that in certain seating positions, even though my living room isn't even that big, that I'll notice the bass isn't as good as other seating positions. If I had two subwoofers, that might not be an issue because I can put one on one side of the room and one on the other side. But I just don't have the space for that. And that's why if you have the room for two subwoofers, I think it would be better to get two smaller and cheaper ones than the PV16 Ultra.